Well, welcome to a special edition, like a bonus episode of the Vic State Cricket Podcast because I was down at Junction Oval today and I spotted someone that I was been watching on the television a lot and I said, you're coming up for a chat. Todd Murphy, welcome back to the podcast and congratulations. Thanks, Whitey. Thanks for having me back on. How long have you been back in the country for, first? Um, got back in last Wednesday, so been here for sort of, yeah, four or five days now and settled in nicely. It was It was nice to come home. Do you have to pinch yourself with what's happened over the last couple of months? Yeah, for sure. I think it's probably, yeah, beyond my wildest dreams, sort of how fast it's happened and and what's sort of taken place. I think it's really nice to be able to get back to Melbourne now and sort of reflect on it. I think while you're over there, you're quite caught up in sort of you've got a job to do and you want to make sure you're um, performing the best you can and you're sort of caught up in that. But I think it's been nice over the last few days being home to sort of reflect on what's happened and yeah, what it can potentially mean for me going forward. And, um, yeah, it's sort of the sacrifices that have been put in um, to this point, sort of all worth it. And, yeah, look back and reflect really fondly on what's just happened. Are you proud of yourself? Yeah, definitely. I think, like, I never expected my th- myself this early on to sort of say that I'm a test cricketer. So, um, yeah, I am, I am proud of myself. And um, I suppose it's just a reflection of, like, a lot of hard work that sort of has been put in over years previous so to get the opportunity to play for Australia which is something that um, as a mad cricket lover growing up it's it's all I've sort of ever wanted to do so for that to be a reality now I'm yeah super stoked with it and yeah still pinch myself. What was the best part? Um, yeah I think I had two highlights like although the whole experience was amazing the um, the cap presentation the morning of day one um, having Nathan Lyon a guy that has been so good to me and um, I've looked up to for a long time to have him present my baggy green and I think the baggy green is something that's um, talked about a lot so to have that moment where you know you're getting presented with it and once you put it on know that no one can ever take that away from you. Um, that morning of yeah day one knowing that I'm going to play a test match was a massive highlight and then winning the first our first test match, um, the third test over there and the thing in the song was something that I think I'll remember forever, sort of just stand in a circle and going through the proceedings of how that works and, um, yeah, getting to celebrate with everyone and they're not easy to win over there, those games. So, um, yeah, they were probably my two highlights. I'll get back to more experience of, of India, but then coming back and seeing family and friends for the first time and, and everyone being so excited for you, does, is that when it sort of hits home a little bit more about what you've been able to achieve? Yeah, definitely. I still haven't been able to catch up with mum and dad yet since I've been back. Um, they're back in the country, so haven't had a chance to get back there. But, um, yeah, just coming back and sort of even walking through here today and seeing all the boys again and um, you can see how happy they are for, yeah, one of their mates to be to have done well. So it's really nice and, um, yeah, I've had a lot of great support over the last couple of months and, a lot of messages of, of people, yeah, wishing me well and congratulating me, which has been, yeah, super nice. And it's, know that, it's nice to know that you've got people behind you and wanting you to do well. Are you a different cricketer coming back, a different person coming back? No, I don't think so. I don't think um, different cricketer or maybe the only thing you sort of, I suppose you just take belief from it to, to know that um, what I'm doing, it, it can work and just keep believing and trusting in that and knowing that the work I'm putting in um, – the rewards you can get from that is, yeah, definitely worth it. But as far as a person goes, no, I'm definitely not a different person. And um, like going over there, I didn't expect to play four tests, but playing four tests hasn't changed anything. And I still still love coming back to um, to Melbourne and just doing my own thing and, um, yeah, sliding back into normal life. And, um, yeah, definitely haven't changed from that point of view. You might struggle <laughs> going back into normal life now. You're an Australian test cricketer. Okay, let's go back to that first test match and the, and the seven wickets and the excitement that, for you, for your teammates, yeah. uh, but for everyone back home watching on television, all the people that you've connected with along the way that were sharing in that same excitement. What can you remember of that amazing day? Yeah, it was – I think the day one probably didn't go as well as we would have hoped for, but personally to get a wicket the night of day one I think sort of settled me right down and it was nice to, to go into the end of that day No one got a wicket, no one can ever take that away from me slept a bit better than I did the night before. Um, and then, yeah, coming back the next day, it was it was just great fun. And I think playing on that wicket where it was spinning quite big and there was only two of us playing, it was sort of you knew that you were going to get a lot of opportunity across the course of the day to bowl and um, compete. So, yeah, it was sort of – it was one of those ones that you're always in – you feel like you're in the game because there's enough happening. And then, yeah, to get some rewards and um, – yeah, the DRS for my fifth wicket when that come up, pitching in line, 
um, hitting in line and then hitting stumps. Like that's probably the best like feeling I've had on a cricket field really. So like that was amazing and even to, yeah, to be able to share that with um, the boys and you could see how happy they were for me um, was, yeah, it was so good as well. And then, yeah, getting my phone back that night and sort of seeing all the messages from back home was, yeah, you just pinch yourself and go, that's yeah, that just happened and, um, yeah, how amazing it was. So as it's happening, are you getting to the top of your mark going, I've just taken four wickets in a test match or I've taken six wickets in a test match. This this is actually happening or is it happening so quickly out on the field you haven't got that time to to reflect almost for a fleeting moment as to what's unfolding? Yeah, I think there's definitely probably um, a little bit of both. I know after I took my fifth wicket, um, Gaz comes straight over to me and goes, because I was feeling a deep square leg when I wasn't bowling, he goes, go down there and take a moment to reflect on what's just happened. Like um, this doesn't happen every day, so make sure you take it all in and enjoy it, which was probably it's nice to hear that from a senior guy as well because coming in you don't want to be seen to sort of be content with that and you want to make sure there's mind on the job the whole time. So it was there was definitely times out there where I, I was able just to sort of t- soak it all in and um, look around and go, wow, that's just happened. So I definitely tried to make sure I, I did that. Two years ago uh, it was Easter and you're bowling for the first time for Victoria against Henry Hunt and this was a big moment for you, first-class debut. Uh, yeah, two years later you're staying at the top of your mark about to bowl to Virat Kohli. Um, things can happen pretty quickly in life. Yeah, it's been like it's been a bit of a – it's a crazy journey, I suppose. It's sort of been just one thing's happened after another and it's it's sort of hard at times to, to I suppose, realise what's come of it. So, um, yeah, look back two years ago, that doesn't feel like long ago at all. No. And um, even my journey sort of last year, I only played the one Shield game um, and I felt like I was still making, like, good improvements in my game at St Kilda, um, building some confidence there. So – it is. It's amazing, I suppose, how fast things can change. And at times you might feel like you're not close at all, but then it only takes a couple of um, things to go your way and you can be right in the mix. What was it like? I know you got Virat Kohli out quite a few times, um, but there's also the likes of Pajara in that side and, I mean, the list goes on. Um, what was that experience like? Did, did you get nervous bowling to them or the plans, you know, how long did you spend with the plans to get them out? What, what was that whole experience like? Yeah, there team they had over there like I don't think it could be more suited to those conditions and like how their team structured they bat all the way down to number nine or ten and um they're just so good at knowing um what they need to do in those conditions and how to play it so um there was definitely a fair bit of vision watched and but there was also I think I took a fair bit out of watching some vision and knowing that although these guys are great players there's also ways that they go out um I think I took some confidence from that going okay like going into game one that if I do put together what I think I can, that um, I can compete. So, and then we had we had some really good conversations around um, what that looked like and what a good day in the subcontinent looks like. And it might not be the four or five wickets; it might be holding the scoreboard and going at sort of one and two and over to just hold the game and and try and make sure you're staying in it. So, yeah. And then there's like there's times I suppose I think like bowling my first ball, I was sent at top of my back to Kale Rahul and. Um, like that was probably the most nervous I've been on a cricket field. And then when Coley came out to bat in that first test match, although I think I'd bowled probably 15 overs by then and sort of before that felt like, okay, everything had calmed down, when he sort of come out and the cheer that went up and then I was at the top of my mark going, wow, like this is this is as good as it gets. Like bowling to Coley, a guy who you've watched on the TV for years, just dominate world cricket. Um, and over there is an absolute god to them. They like adore him and love him. So... Um, yeah, there was numerous times over there where I'd sort of catch myself at the top of my mark on. This is like this is really cool, and um, just try to the whole time I sort of told myself, don't get caught up in the performance. Like go over there and just enjoy what you're doing and and compete, and whatever happens from there happens, and just sort of love the journey that I've been on and um, love being out there. And I think that helped me because I was um, didn't go over there with high expectations or anything like that. So I was able just to enjoy the ride in the way and soak it all in and just have fun with it. And upset millions and millions and millions of Indians. <laughs> you can't have been too popular with the supporters. They were there to watch Coley, but you kept getting him out. Yeah, it's amazing. Like I feel it a lot on the boundary throughout the test matches um, just with sort of the way the game's played. You have a fair few guys out in the boundary and the amount of times like you'd have them one, one down or zero down and they'd be saying, Murphy, get a wicket, we come to see Coley bat. And that's like <laughs> that's all they want to – all they come to watch. That's 
like he's their one guy that everyone adores and it's weird in a way when you get the person out before him, that's the biggest cheer of the game and like it's something that you wouldn't expect to you're getting one of their players out but they're so happy because the guy they've come to watch is is coming. So, yeah, it's it's amazing. Then like they just live and breathe cricket over there so it was cool to see. Now a couple of cricket nuffy questions really sort of digging down a little bit deeper. Um, Ashwin and Dravid were two people that really sung your praises post the series about how well you bowled. To get validation from those two, how much did that mean to you? Yeah, I think it's it's always nice to get validation from people like that and guys that have, I suppose, seen so much in those conditions and um, know them so well. So, And Ashwin, in a way, for he's sort of the blueprint of what you want to be able to do in Asia um, with how how versatile he is, uh, he is and adaptable to be able to chop in and out of plans. And, um, yeah, to have those words... I suppose spoken about me was yeah really nice and assuring that um, what I'm doing's um, yeah it's it's it definitely working and they've taken notice of it so I think that does yeah it gives you a little bit of extra confidence um, but also knowing coming back to Australia and and going forward now that the sort of stuff that you do over there is sometimes not as repeatable here so you've got to find mm. a way to keep adapting and and be more versatile to different conditions so yeah. it does it definitely does give me a bit more confidence knowing that guys like that are. Um, liked what they've seen. Did you get a chance to sit down with them post series? I, I know that Matt Kuhneman got a chance to speak to to Ravi Jadeja yeah. about you know how you went or ways yeah. to improve. Did you get that? No, opportunity? I didn't. I didn't speak to Ashwin. He was a bit caught up after the game, sort of with um, some presentation stuff and that. So I didn't get the chance. Well, you to... outbold him as well, so it's naturally <laughs> you probably wouldn't have speak to you. I didn't get the chance to speak to him, but I think um, like looking forward, we still play them. Um, in the World Test Championship final. So hopefully there is a time at some stage where, and even if it is um, like Rahul Dravid, something like that, from a batting point of view, it would be nice to, to have a conversation with some of those guys and just see where they, like what they see and if they've got anything for me. But, um, yeah, like it's yeah, it's one of those ones that the more conversations you can have with people like that, the, mm. the better like, and well-rounded you'll be. The, the last one on the, on the real technical side of cricket the, the square seam bowling versus over the top and yep. all these sorts of things. And people, commentators were seeing you bowl for the first time and sort of thought you were a certain bowler, but yep. it showed your versatility that you're able to change the way you bowled your off spin to suit yep. the conditions, which is a real credit to you to start your career. Yeah. Can you talk, talk us through a little bit about that for people that might be butting off spinners uh, in different conditions as to what you change to, to, to suit the conditions? Yeah, I think you mentioned like it's a credit to me. I think that's... A credit to Craig Howard. Like from the moment um, I decided and with him that I was going to try and bowl off spin, the three things he said to me that I needed was an over spinner, so bowling with top spin, and then a square spinner, and then an arm ball. So that's the three things you need. That if you can um, have them in your blueprint and be really confident of executing them in any conditions, you're going to be able to compete um, sort of wherever you go. So I think I've been lucky in a way that I didn't grow up bowling off spin. And that's all I knew. I was sort of when I come into it, I was really open on. I wasn't sure exactly what I was doing, so mm-hmm. I sort of I trusted Craig and um, yeah, the information that he was able to give to me around that that that's sort of what I've known growing up. So I've always been comfortable to be able to chop and change between seam positions and um, going over there, and especially on the first surface that with the red soil they have over there that's um, bowling with sort of high overspin, there's no pace off the wicket so it can sort of stop and be a lot easier for them to score because there's a lot more time whereas um, I found like pretty quickly that by going to the square seam and um, bowling that little bit faster that sort of there's more room for natural variation. So, yeah, across the course of the series I think um, it was nice to, yeah, build that continuity with just consistently bowling a lot more square spin um, stuff over there because it's just... It's more abrasive to the surface and you've also got, without having to change too much, more chance of natural variation where you've always got both sides of the edges in play and, um, yeah, you're filling the game. Okay. Your season hasn't finished yet. You've got one more game to play, the the Shield final for Victoria. Um, Another thing to tick off your list. Um, How exciting is it to have this whole culmination of things from way back, back in what, June or July when you started, to, to finish the season like this? Yeah, I think it's it's awesome. You sort of you come back and um, like you feel refreshed, and you just want to go again. Like to have that sort of at the end of the se- uh, end of the season to be able to yeah compete in a Shield final. Um, 
and like just being able to watch the way the boys have gone about it for the last month and a half, it's been like it's been outstanding. That you can just see how everyone's enjoying their cricket and um, how confident everyone is in each other. So I think there's yeah, there's a high confidence in the group, and for me coming back in, um, it's really exciting for me as well. And like I can't wait to be a part of it um, to go over there and yeah, I think it shapes up to be a really good game. So yeah, if you told me at the start of the year that like we'd be playing in the Shield final, that's that's something that everyone here is jumping at. So. It's what you set out to do at the start of the season and for us to be going over there and getting another chance to do it after last year is a credit to everyone here. When we, we talk about the the spark, which was the game against New South Wales, that got Victoria on its winning sequence and you played such a big part on that final day. Did you sense that something magical was in this group, that, that, that the run could happen or are you surprised at, at how well everyone's lifted both individually but collectively to, to give yourselves a chance at the title? No, I think definitely at the time, like you trust and you believe that we could, if things went well, we could get on a roll. And I think you look back to the start of the season, we played Sackers to start with and probably with a better team in round one, they um, held on for a draw and um, played the Whackers out here, have a draw. So we actually we were playing some pretty good cricket just without results going our way. And then really nice, I think, to get that win post uh, pre-BBL to go into that break with a bit of confidence mm-hmm. and then... I think coming back, it's sort of everyone. You can just you can see it from afar that the boys are just growing in confidence and um, believing that what they're doing can work and hold up. So I think it was definitely the making was there in the group, and we've got a great mix of senior guys with Harry and um, and Danny up the top, and then Barrel in the bowling, and then you got Shorty through the middle, who's sort of yeah in the middle age bracket, and then you got the young guys that are just growing sort of the whole time they're playing with like Ferg and Pez and Callaway. Um, so there's a makings of a really good side there and. Guys, I think, are just trying to like make sure they're playing for each other and trying to do everything they can to um, yeah, help the team out. So it's been it's been awesome to watch. And one person you're going to get to do it with is Peter Hanscom, who you, was a travelling companion of yours over the last couple of months. Was it extra special to share that with a St Kilda teammate, a Victorian teammate, your, your test debut, and to have the success you had with him over there? Because he did well himself. Yeah. Individually, what what was that like, and did that make your job easier having someone that knew you so well out there on the field of battle with you? Yeah, definitely. I think the and you look back to the first test with Scotty playing as well. That yes. to have sort of two guys that um, I'd played a bit of cricket with and was comfortable around, to have them out there um, with me for the whole time, and Pete being um, my captain here, like you've been able to build a relationship with him, and he was awesome throughout that whole tour of recognizing, I suppose, moments where. If you could see I was a touch nervous or um, whatever it was that he was able to come up to me and just just a calming influence and a bit of experience and just sort of put his arm around me and just have some chats and um, just keep saying like just trust what you're doing mate and if you've got a different plan in mind like be open to it and and all that so it was yeah it was so good to be able to share that with him over there and to see him um, go over there and be so so trusting in what he believed in in his own like method. Um, mm. I thought he was outstanding the whole series and it's a credit to him because he's worked really hard, I think, in the background of Australian cricket um, here at Victoria and he's been successful over the last couple of years. So to get another chance for him to go back into the Australian side and show everyone how good he was was awesome to see and, yeah, he did really well. Where's your baggy green? It's at home at the moment. So um, you get a, a bag that comes with a baggy green that they've, they've taken that away from me at the moment to embroider my um, initials on. So... It's a bit bare at the moment and I'm a bit nervous with it, but, um, yeah, it's in a safe place and I'll make sure it stays that way. Fantastic, Todd. Look, it's great that you could share some of your experiences. As I said, we're all really excited in here with what you've achieved over the last couple of months. It's almost a bit surreal talking to you because we've just been watching you on TV every night for the last couple of months. But um, we're all really proud of you. Um, go well this week uh, with the, the Shield final ahead and hopefully you can bowl just as well as you did over in India. Thank you, Whitey. I appreciate that. Todd Murphy, a special edition of the Vic State Cricket Podcast. It's a bit of a celebration week, isn't it? Celebrating with our Victorian players playing for Australia and a Shield final this week. What a big week it is in Victorian cricket.